What's up, gamers? How's it going? It is currently 1.40 a.m. We are cozy with the blanket. We're going to move the camera slightly over because I am not leaning forward right now. And uh, you may be wondering, hey, why is there a bunch of text on my screen? Well, uh, it's what I'm working on at the moment. Yeah, if you'll notice near the top left of the screen, you'll see the title of the document, Trey d d Backstory. So, what you're seeing here is the background for the character I'm making for Trey's d d that I'm going to be a part of. Trey being my friend, whose YouTube and Twitch name are Tanafe. I don't know if he's actually going to be making any content with the D&D, but if he does, you'll find it there. I may make videos talking more about this as we go on with it, like detailing what happens as kind of like a diary kind of deal, but who knows. We'll find out later. First day is Wednesday. I'm still not finished with the backstory, and uh, I just kind of wanted to, to talk about it with you guys why because i because i can because i felt like it so yeah. the way it starts is naltharian my character excuse me who we're going to call him nell from now on because i don't want to say naltharian all the time comes from a former prominent noble family from the empire of the of the, the, the that's the setting the empire family's name was blood fury when it was still active but one day when nell and his sister were hatchlings around seven or so i'm going to guess i haven't actually asked trey about the specifics of the hatchling age ranges is there something like humans where hatchling is like one to teenagers? Uh, I don't know. Either way, it happened when Nell and his sister were young, when their family was wiped out. The Blood Fury family was an arrogant family, caused lots of issues with the other nobles, as well as created a lot of enemies. So it makes sense that they got wiped out in the middle of the night. Two hatchlings were able to escape with the help of their family, uh -huh. and they ran for what felt like days until they found themselves lost. And then I don't go into detail about what happens after they run because that's not too important. Like, I might make up some events later on that happened during that time, but it is not important to the overarching backstory. Understand? Good. Then we go, after a number of years pass, Nell and sister, whose name I still haven't come up with, have grown and matured very quickly since they've had to live on their own since uh, they were kids. And they've been living nomadic lives in the Empire's uh, countryside, going from town to town in order to avoid any lurking eyes from any nobles or noble servants. Excuse me again. The odd job here and there, like helping farmers farm or plant stuff or deal with pests and construction, mostly Nell helped with construction, like uh, delivered materials, uh, helped with the tools and whatnot as well as the kindness from the residents of the towns were enough to let them get by these past few years and now finally being able to live his own life after uh like learning how to survive and finally having the time to nurture a hobby or an interest he becomes interested in fighting like hunting 
and whatnot, like for sport. Since he finally has the spare thinking room to let his desires out, it's, it's right there. So, at the age of 14, Nell volunteers to go hunting with the uh, other hunters at the village that they were at. Much to the dismay of his sister, who still has nightmares of the day that they ran away. And his sister is spooked easily. So, this is, this next part is relevant to the class that I'm going to be, which is Barbarian. No, nope, no, nope, no, nope, Berserker. Similar, but not the same. Berserker. Before Nell and the Hunters go out, they ask, Hey, Nell, what's your weapon of choice? Because they they gotta give him a weapon. He doesn't know what weapon he would want, because he's never actually used a weapon before. I mean, he's used tools. that Tools can be used as weapons, but they're not weapons. So they give him a bow, which is typical for hunting, but they said try not to use the bow because you're not practiced with it. And a pretty heavy hand axe. This hand axe is still pretty heavy even from, uh, even though Nell is strong and athletic because of the kind of odd jobs that he does. But it didn't feel wrong. The heaviness did not feel wrong in his hand. So he, it felt right. The hunt goes well. Or at least at the beginning. It did. Partway through, Nell began to hear voices all around. Things like, you shouldn't be here. Leave. Kill all. Why are you still alive? You don't belong. Out of place. Extra baggage. Now, where is that other, where, where's the, there's a character sheet. So, the background that I have for Naltharian is a haunted one, which is like something traumatic happened in the past, which is the whole family, the whole family going away and being destroyed thing, right? So context out of the way, Nell was able to ignore it by focusing on it, but then that caused his mind to be off the hunt, and while his mind was focusing on ignoring the voices, it was an accident. <sighs> one of the hunters was plucked away into the branches. No one noticed at first, but then the next one went and there were murmurs. And then the next one. People panicked. Oh, but that, that looks right. All right. And then it appeared. The monster ordained in the skulls of the Draco can, because that's, that's the race that I am and what most other people are in the draco -ness Empire. draco -ness. <laughs> And then it appeared, with three more newer bloody skulls on its necklace. Nell was still focusing on ignoring the voices that he failed to notice what was going on in front of him. Until one of the hunters bumped into him and yelled at him. I'll change that to yelled. Shouted. Shouted. Is more like. Shouted, run fool. That's when Nell focused back in and saw it. Saw him. Nell recognized the monster. From his childhood. From the one fateful night. Even though he had only gotten a glimpse of the monster. He could never forget the scene nor the monster's look. The scene of his family member getting decapitated with the monster's bare hands, ripping, ripping the person apart, and the skulls as decoration. This was the monster that had killed his family, and coming face to face with it was absolutely frightening 
that I'm going to change to terrifying because terrifying sounds a lot better. To know, but he did as the hunter said, albeit a second too late. The hunter didn't start running until Nell started as well. And as they started to run away, the hunter was plucked away. Nell looked back in horror and saw the monster grinning, taunting him, and waving as it plucked the head from the hunter's shoulders with only one hand. Kind of like holding, holding the body right here, and then the head would be right here, and then plop, like that. Graphic. <laughs> Graphic, I know. And that's another scene Nell would never forget. As he ran back to town. Strangely enough, the monster didn't chase after Nell. For what reason, no one knows. Except for the monster, of course. But when he got back to town, he tried to explain himself and what happened. And was simply ostracized for causing this. Causing the incident to occur as Nell being the dumb guy he is decided to uh, explain what happened in the past not like showing or telling them about his bloodline and whatnot but just telling them my family was wiped out by the very monster that killed everyone else but then they, were, they began to be ostracized, Nell and his sister. So they had to leave town soon after that because the townsfolk were becoming increasingly disagreeable, causing arguments, uh, being like, <laughs> ignoring them. So after, after that, after all that, Nell started to have the nightmares again, like his sister. But it ended up worse than his sister's because of how recent it was and how graphic it was and him having seen it in full. Yeah, that's what I have so far. And I feel like I need just a bit more. And by a bit more, I mean like another full page more. Excuse me. So, let's see. Uh, on that is not what I want. On the road. No. Here's the voices. Call out to him almost constantly now. No, we don't. We're not going to say on the road. We're just going to say statement. Nell hears the voices. Almost constantly now. Starting to make him paranoid and angry. Never a good combination. And sister is worried eventually I'll freaking come up with a name for the sister if you if you want to give recommendations for the name of the sister please go ahead I insist that would help a lot uh do, do, do. Do da da knew about what had happened to Nell 
in the forest even though Nell did did not want her to know since he didn't 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 want to remind her of the past but she heard from the town's people before she before they left um Oh, catalyst. A catalyst for Nell to become unparanoid. I don't think there's going to be a catalyst. I think he's going to stay paranoid. But I think his paranoidness is going to change to be simply cautious more cautious than the average person kind of like a kind of like a scaredy cat you could say so how would i go about doing that You're, so does the sister get kidnapped? Does something happen to the sister? That's what I that's what I'm thinking about. Cause at the moment his sister is not that important to his overall character. He just has a sister right now. That's the thing. I wanna make the sister important. I want the sister to be part of the campaign. But at the moment, the sister doesn't have any story. Which is what this last part is for. It's This last part is more detailing the sister than it is Nell. It is trying to show that his sister cares for Nell as well as can handle herself even if Nell isn't around for a bit to go hunting again or something like she could stay in town by herself or at the end or whatever. It'll be like, it's okay. And then the sister will be like, I'll be fine. And she will be fine. Because she herself is also pretty strong. Because she also participated in the, the field work and whatnot. To, to get by. So... So, so, we not gonna kill her off. We could give her some kind of special power somehow. But I don't know if that'd be okay with Trey. Like, it's, it wouldn't be like a overpowered special power, but like, it'd be basically giving her a class or something. And in Nell's sister's case, I have to take a look at the classes again. Where are they? A. A. 
it's racist. That's it's I gotta open it. Hold on. Uh character creation. I need classes, 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 classes. There it is. All right. What class would best fit Nell's sister? I think. I think either a scholar or an occultist. Mages whose magics come from dark mage who uses their magic to control the dead. And then Well these are these are uh these are like the big warlock classes, but like warlock is the normal normal beginning class. Hmm Hmm. I could. Yeah, I could make her a druid. I'm thinking druid or warlock at the moment. And I think warlock is more in line for what I'm looking for. The monster that has haunted their family is more like, I'd say it's more like a demon than it is an animal or person. Just a demon that hates dragon people. So, you wanted to become, so like, She's using the demon's powers to kill demons, kind of like a demon hunter. <laughs> I'm not naming her Illidan. <laughs> I can't do that. What if I name her a combination of Illidan and Tyrande? Like, Illinde. Alinde? You guys like Alinde? I like Alinde a lot. Alinde. Let's just copy that. Where else is there? Is there, a, is there a line? Oh yeah, Alinde is a good name right there. <sighs> Seeing her brother in such a rut. I think it's a bit more than a rut, but uh, for lack of a better word, we're going to keep rut. <laughs> if we find a better word later, we'll fix it. Did, did not please her. You should be... Confident and not necessarily stoic, but oh, something it's like stoic. This is what we use Google for stoic synonyms.
That's not what we're looking for. Can we get words similar to stoic? Similar. Similar words. Similar words to stoic. Aloof. That's synonyms again. Well, fine. Fine. Alright. Aloof. Apathetic. Detached. Impassive. Indomitable. I like indomitable. Enduring. Self-controlled. Self-controlled. I like self-controlled. Because at the moment, he's not self-controlled. Because he's letting the voices and his nightmares torment him and dictate his actions. He always is. Yeah. Yeah. It's two thirteen. I took a lot longer than I thought it would for this. Anyway, that's it for today. Look forward to more Persona in the coming days. I think I'm going to play a bit before I head to sleep. Get some more recordings in the bag. Well, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for watching this all the way through. Even if it wasn't uh, the best thing to watch. I think, I think it's interesting. I think so. Hopefully it is for other people who like stories and whatnot. Also, if you ever need a cool concept for a D&D &D character, uh, just hit me up. So comment down below, like, can you give me a quick concept for a D&D &D character? I'll give you a quick concept. I won't give you the story, obviously, because that would take a while. Also, if you want the story, you'll have to pay me. Well, that's a whole different basket. No, we're just we're just talking about quick concepts for characters. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to subscribe for more content. Subscribe if you want to subscribe. Like if you like this content and want to see more. And comment below if you want to. Have a good day, everybody, and peace out.